you're watching the Sunbeam Alpine channel. Here we are at Oily Puddles Garage and hopefully you're enjoying watching the videos. If you do enjoy the videos, please like them and subscribe to the channel. Today we're going to be looking at installing a roller clutch bearing into the Alpine. There's nothing actually wrong with the original carbon graphite clutch bearing, but they're very difficult to get a good one now. A lot of the pattern parts can break up or even have the carbon ring come completely loose. So we've fitted a high quality roller bearing in place. And uh, it's really quite an impressive conversion. It's well worth considering. We'll show you how we've done it. I'm sure that if you have an Alpine, you know, but just for any new people who may not be aware, you should never depress the clutch of an Alpine when you start it. It's not like a modern car, and if you do depress the clutch, all you're doing is loading up the thrust washers and you'll increase wear and make it harder to start the car. So keep your foot off of the clutch when you start it. With Alpines, there are various different clutch components that were used over the years. There are different numbers of splines on the clutch plate. There's been different support blocks and different lever arm mechanisms. If these parts get confused and mixed up, you can end up with a clutch that doesn't work properly. Therefore, I would recommend to you that if you have a clutch that's working well, it's just worn out. Think about having that reconditioned rather than buying a brand new one. In the past, we've had a couple of occasions where we've bought new parts, believing them to be correct. And then once they're all installed in the car, the clutch not working properly. So now we always get our own parts reconditioned. This is our original clutch. It's been away to precision clutches. It's been fully refurbished and sent back to us. They've done a first class job of it. This roller clutch bearing is very high quality, really well made. We have no connection with the company, but would recommend their products. We paid full list price for the roller bearing. You can see here how the bearing face is scored and starting to have parts flake off of it. Despite what some may claim, your release bearing does not do this. It stays pretty much central on the shaft. Don't worry about the roller bearing sliding across the thrust face. This is not what happens. When the bearing makes contact, it will start to spin and will self-center. This is why some owners have had these bearings in their Alpines for many years. This is the maths behind the movement of the bearing. A club member did these calculations and we thank him for them. If you like mathematics, you can work through the trigonometry for yourself. But in other words, the roller bearing will be pretty much centered. When replacing the clutch, it's a good idea to change the spigot bearing. You fit either a new sintered bronze one or a roller spigot bearing. If you're using a bronze bush, soak it in oil overnight and ensure that a roller bearing is well greased. Our last one lasted for more than 30 years in the engine and many, many thousands of miles.
Torque the flywheel bolts to 40 pounds foot and secure with Loctite and locking strips. When fitting the clutch, centralise the plate to line everything up. I just use some tape around a, a, a dowel to centralise it. You can buy a special tool to do it. The plate is usually marked. Make sure you fit it the right way around. The gearbox shaft should align easily with the plate and the bearing once everything is in line. You can see that all is clean and moving freely now. tell you exactly what happens with any of the work we do on our cars and it didn't all go as plain sailing with this car we had a problem when it first went back on the road when we first got everything back together the clutch was a bit grunchy we tried putting washers behind the slave cylinder and also we changed the pedal height with the two positions on the pedal arm after about 50 miles, it seemed to have settled down a lot and we removed the washers, had the slave cylinder installed correctly as it should be and everything is operating correctly. What the problem was, we don't know, but it completely resolved itself as things bedded in. The clutch on this car is smooth, light, it's almost like a modern car clutch now. But the proof of the pudding will be in how long it lasts. If it is uh, still good in 25 or 30,000 miles, we'll know we made a good decision. But it feels good and the car is very nice to drive now. If you fit washers behind the slave cylinder or a longer push rod, even temporarily, make sure that you still have some free play and that the release bearing is not in constant contact with the clutch thrust face. There is a little bit of free play you can feel before you start to move things and then really soft and smooth clutch all the way down to the bottom. Really does feel nice. Check for free play by pulling the lever arm at the bell housing too. You just want to make sure that things aren't touching each other all the time. Once we were happy that everything was working correctly, we installed the rubber boot to keep water out of the bell housing. The car drives really well with the clutch now. It's as light as it's ever been and gear changes are slick, smooth and quiet. We're very pleased that we made this change. We have now done over 2,000 miles with the clutch roller release bearing. It's still really smooth, lovely soft action and very, very quiet. Thoroughly recommend this. We hope that you've enjoyed this video and liked it and hopefully 
you're already a subscriber to the Sunbeam Alpine channel. So, until the next time, it's goodbye from Oily Puddles Garage. Goodbye. Thank you for watching.